something so fun about fishing with a bobber. Of course, I got a lot of slack out. There we go, fish on. <laughs> oh yeah, that ultralight is fun. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's exciting when you get them when they're when you're trolling, but this is just this is like being a little kid again. <laughs> he doesn't know what to think. He's like, what the heck happened? Oh, he's all ooh, there's that there's that dude in the kayak. <laughs> yeah. He, he was laughing at me a minute ago. He ain't laughing now. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this ride. That is a kick in the pants. Oh, good. I think I got him right in the lip, too. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> man he is fun on that light ride let's see here there we go slip bobber baby <laughs> that's a barbless hook I'll see if I can Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. Um, my battery's starting to die, so I'm gonna keep this fairly short. Um, I've been out here bombing through a bunch of video. We're coming off of five days of snow and really bad weather here in the Gold Country foothills, and it looks like more weather's coming in, so I thought I'd better, better get out here and make hay while the sun's shining and put a bunch of video in the can. Um, now I know a lot of the guys that watch this channel, they're trout trollers, but there's also a lot of guys that bank fish, guys that like to anchor up or drift fish, stuff like that. And it seems like every time I talk about a slip bobber, I'll get a bunch of emails about guys giving me some slip, slip bobber tips, guys asking questions, just in, in general kind of stuff. And I had several questions asking, is it really necessary to use a slip bobber? Can you use, you know, uh, uh, an inline bobber? And uh, whenever I hear that, I think about those, those red and white round ones you use for bluegill fishing. But uh, I've actually been doing a little research, and, and I'm gonna be totally honest, I am a slip bobber man, and uh, for a couple reasons. But the primary reason, let me hold this up to the camera, let me take this out of here. So if you don't know how a slip bobber works, let me just kinda, kinda hang on to the rod. I'll kinda go over it here. This one here is a very basic rig because I'm running my main line for leader material. This is a really light rod. It's one of my ultralight three-piece rods. I'm running four pound test. So right here, let me hold this up to the camera. I'll actually put this on my thumb. That is, right, there you go. That is the bobber stop. It's one of those little rubber football shaped affairs. So I threaded that on my line. Then we have right there, we have a bead. We have the bobber. This is very basic. I have a split shot there. I could easily have a swivel there to cut down on twist as well um, and then run a leader off of that. But on this one, as I said, I'm using the main line for the leader too. So I have a, a split shot and then down about, I don't know, 14, 16 inches, I have a teeny tiny light wire hook. Now, the beauty of this rig is, is I can adjust this bobber stop right here. I could fish four feet deep. I could fish eight feet deep. I could fish 20 feet deep. But when it came time to cast, I can reel that bobber stop up into the rod, even up into the reel if I wanted to. And I'm gonna be casting with just that, that bobber there, the weight, and 14 inches a liter. So I can haul off and throw this thing a good distance because I can reel the bobber stop into the rod, but when it crashes down out there, it's gonna sink down to whatever I have the depth set at. I can, I can cast it over there 30 feet and be fishing, you know, 12 feet deep. That's really cool and that's why I like slip bobbers. I ain't gonna lie to you, they can be a pain in the butt. Sometimes they don't sink completely over there. Sometimes they get tangled up in the air, but the frustration is worth it in terms of performance because when you get one to, to sink down correctly, they are absolutely dynamite. They're deadly, they're deadly for a bunch of different kinds of fish. 
trout, dynamite. Put a worm on there. If the law allows, put a minnow under there. Um, power egg, salmon egg, whatever you want to do. It is like your ultimate uh, stealth presentation. Now, these are the bobbers I've been playing around with. I'm actually, I'm actually thinking of using these for stream fishing a little bit this year. This is not a slip bobber. It doesn't have a hollow hole in it. It's a foam bobber. I don't even know what these are called, but it has a weight right there. These are fill bobbers, pretty nice. It has a little lead weight there. So that's the bottom of it. They're weighted. They've, they've got some weight for casting. And up here, this is for anybody who's ever fished a bobber. This is gonna be, let me show you this. Let me pop this down. See that little, little metal? See that little metal hook there? Anybody who's used those red and white bobbers, they're familiar with that. It does the same thing down at the bottom. You can let me put my finger in front of it. See that there? So this is a bobber that you can put in line. You know, you put it four feet from your bait. It's gonna stay right there. That's awesome. If you wanna fish shallow, these work absolutely great. The downside of them is, is you don't have a lot of variation in terms of the depth. If you've got this thing, you know, if you've got a worm six feet below this, you've got to haul off and cast this thing with a six foot leader, which isn't real easy. But if you're fishing, you know, 18, 24, 36 inches deep, all day long, man, this thing is awesome. It's, you put it in your line, forget about it, you could cast, the weight makes it stand upright on the water, and when a fish comes knocking, it's just like a slip bobber in the sense that it's bloop, 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 gone, and it's fish on, baby, it's fun, makes you feel like a little kid. But uh, anyway, if you're not into the whole slip bobber thing, and you are fishing shallow, I'd encourage you to give these a try. I see myself using these in the American this year. Um, I want to experiment with fishing some little small crawfish. I got to get a source for little crawfish, like that big. I want to drift them under a bobber so they can't actually get on the bottom and snag me, but they're going to be there saying, I want to get on the bottom, I want to get on the bottom, and you know what's going to happen next. One of those big old browns rainbows that, uh, that lives in the middle of America is going to come up and you're going to whack that guy, and that bobber is going to go under and I'm going to be screaming like a little girl. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I know there's a lot of guys out there that are interested in bobber fishing, and so am I. Um, hopefully, you're going to see a little more bobber fishing on the show this year. I used to do a ton of that up at Eagle Lake, and it is, it's just something about that bobber going down. It's just plain good old fun. So, anyway, just some thoughts on bobber fishing. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. If you're looking for trout gear, rods, reels, all that kind of stuff, you know where to go. The Fish Hunt Shoot Productions website. That's where our store is located. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification deal and you'll know whenever I'm on here talking about fishing. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off for now. Thanks for all the support. And you guys have a, have a super cool day. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks, guys.